Welcome to Revangelical, Rethinking Christian Living, a podcast that aims to encourage, challenge, and equip Christians in their daily walk with Christ. Join us as we discuss scripture, theology, the issues of the day, and uplifting stories from folks just like you. Here's your host, Danny Forshe. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome again to our Revangelical podcast. I'm delighted to have you join in with us today. Uh, Here at DFBA, our mission is to share messages of hope and encouragement uh, from the Word of God. Our prayer is that this episode will bless you and your relationship uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're currently studying uh, the 30 life principles that Dr. Charles Stanley preached and lived by. All 30 of these messages can be viewed online at intouch.org, and I would encourage you to do that. I have been listening to these, and they are richly blessing uh, my life. And so I'm, I'm a learner. I'm a lifelong learner. I want to continue to learn and glean from others. And as I do that and I learn from others, it just wells up within me some ideas and some thoughts that I want to share with you. But I am deeply indebted to Dr. Stanley and his teachings. He was the pastor of the First Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia, for over 50 years. Amazing. I've served my church here now for a little over 13 years. And I'm like, yay. And I'm like, 50 years, wow. Reminds me of W.A. Criswell served First Baptist Dallas for 50 years, and his successor, George W. Truett, also served the church for 50 years. He had two pastors uh, in 100 years. Dr. Stanley was well known for his faithfulness to the Word of God and to teach the Bible on his In Touch TV broadcast. He passed away April 18th, just a few months ago, a couple of months ago, July I mean, excuse me, April 18, 2023, at 90 years of age. So today, I hope you're going to be encouraged and blessed by what you hear as we're going to look at this fifth life principle, and it's called the unreasonable will of God. God does not require us to understand His will, just obey it, even if it seems unreasonable. Now, this is the fifth principle Dr. Charles Stanley, and we're going to continue to draw strength from the Word of God and be blessed by Dr. Stanley's teaching. I'm also going to share with you some of my my own thoughts as I have done in the uh, this 30 Life Principles series. Like before, these teachings of Stanley came to me at just the right time. Really, it's just amazing how uh, listening to his message and in in just as I'm preparing my message for you, I was just like, "Wow, I don't know who else needed to hear this, but I sure needed to hear this, and it was so timely. Isn't God good like that? I mean, you open up your Bible and the Word of God just speaks directly uh, to what you are experiencing or what you're thinking about, or you hear a sermon or a brother or a sister says something to you, and it's exactly what you need to hear. God knows what we have need of, and he has a truth and a promise in the word of God that he uses to speak to us at just the precise, exact, right time. It's amazing how God does this and how he speaks to his children through his inspired word, the Holy Bible. I just met with a man here at our church just before I came into the studio to uh, tape this podcast for you today. And um, he was share with me how God just recently brought two people into his life that was able to speak truth to him, listen to a, a current scenario, a really a hard issue that he's going through. And he said, it was amazing how both of these people were available and they listened to me and I was able to glean from them. And he said, you know what? That could not be a coincidence. Then he went on to say, I don't believe in coincidences. And I absolutely agree. God is just good like that to his children. He loves us, he's for us, and he wants to speak to us. In fact, he wants us to know his will. I heard somebody say one time, God wants you to know his will more than you want to know his will for your life. Knowing the will of God for your life is so vitally important. I'm not surprised that this subject, knowing the will of God, is number five in the uh 30 Life Principles, a series by Dr. Stanley. You could say, yep, it made it into the top five. That's how important it is. Now, I want to share with you some of the highlights from his message that I listened to online. I'm going to try and capture for you 
uh, some of what he said. And as I said earlier, and you'll hear me just kind of break away and make some comments myself on this, again, very important topic of knowing, and not just knowing, but doing uh, the will of God. Dr. Stanley said this question is the one that he was asked the most in his ministry, and it will go something like this. Wow, I'm just trying to figure out what God's will is for me. Can you help me? Wow, this message that he preached has helped millions of people, and I'm just one of many that it has helped, and I'm hoping that my podcast today, as I share some of the truth that he shared and also some of the things that I believe God has given me to share, that it will help you as well. It's one of the most important aspects of your life, and God is committed to showing you his will for your life if you and I are willing to seek him and we want to understand what his will is for us. At times, according to the title of Dr. Stanley's lesson, at times it does seem unreasonable, right? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up to us initially. But God does not require us to understand, but to obey, even if it does not make sense. We want a full understanding. Dr. Stanley said, when you and I want a full understanding, we're headed for trouble. We are obligated to obey God no matter what. And I love that, how Dr. Stanley is so direct in his teachings. I heard a critique of pastors just a, just a few days ago. I was listening to a secular radio station, the news. And on this radio station, there was a guy giving a commentary and he was critiquing pastors in America. And so it kind of piqued my interest and I'm a, my attention because I am a pastor. I do live in America. And he was kind of letting us pastors have it. He says, you know what? So many pastors, are un- they're afraid to speak up on moral issues. And rather that they give their congregations these very soft and fluffy sermons, that is not what they need to be doing. They need to be more bold, more courageous and speak the truth. And I was like, Wow, I agree. And you cannot say that about Stanley. He genuinely spoke the truth of God, but he did it with compassion. He was a Bible teacher, and that is exactly what we need so desperately today. We need Bible teachers, people who open up the Word of God and speak uh, what the Scripture says. And Dr. Stanley's message reminded me of another great man of God, who spoke a lot about and still does to this day. I believe he's in his 90s. He still speaks about the will of God, and that's Dr. Henry Blackaby. And maybe you've read his book or went through his workbook called Experiencing God. Wow, people are still today reading that book and going through his curriculum. I remember going through it, uh, going through the workbook in this first church that I served as the senior pastor. It was called the Mount Gilead Baptist Church in Keller, Texas. Today it's called the Mount. That was over 30 years ago, and it was fresh to me then, and it's fresh to many people today because it hits on something that we're all very interested in, that is knowing God's will. Now, I'm talking about knowing God's will, not just for the big things in life, but also for the little things in life. Dr. Stanley, his primary text, his biblical text, was Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. I want to invite you today to open up your Bible. If you can, uh, if you're driving down the road, please don't grab your Bible or your phone. Just keep driving. Look, let your eyes look straight ahead. Uh, maybe you're at the gym, and that's when I listen to podcasts. Sometimes I'm at the gym, or maybe you're just chilling out at home, or maybe you have a lunch break at work. And so I want to share with you this text, share some of his comments on the text, share some of my own comments. And again, we're talking today about knowing and doing the will of God. You know, God has a well-tailored plan for your life. And it's unlike anybody else's plan because you're unique. And if you know Christ, then you have a destiny. You have a purpose. You have a plan that God has it for you. He wants to reveal it to you. And then he wants you to step out in faith and obedience and do what he's asking you to do. So here's the text, Luke chapter five. I'm gonna begin reading in verse one. So it was, as the multitude pressed about Jesus to hear the word of God, that Jesus stood by the lake of 
Genesaret, and that's also called uh, the Sea of Galilee in the New Testament. Um, and the, he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and they were washing their nets. Then he, Jesus, got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, that would be Simon Peter, and asked him to put a little out from the land. And Jesus sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, uh, we have toiled all night and caught nothing nevertheless. At your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was <laughs> breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and he said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and they followed him. I love this story. Before I get into more of Stanley's message on Luke chapter five, I had this thought while I was reading this story in Luke's gospel, I believe Peter and John had heard Jesus teach. They were listening to him, listening to the message. And we don't have the message recorded, what Jesus was actually preaching that day, Luke chapter five, but they were listening. Jesus put out the boat. He got in Simon's boat, went out a few further feet, Maybe for better acoustics, uh, you know, there's a reason behind it. So maybe he could see the people better. And he spoke the message. And I think the message, part of his message was calling people to repent and to follow him. But that's exactly what we see Peter doing. After he heard Jesus speak, saw the miracle of the fish, the catching of the fish, he gives his life to Christ. And I saw something similar to that happen uh, during our vacation Bible school. Now, we're recording this episode a few weeks removed from VBS. We had it, and it was a fantastic week. But we had, one day, we had 17 people pray to receive Christ here on our campus. Two of those 17 were volunteers. Uh, they were teenagers who were here to serve. And it's almost like they overheard. It's kind of like Peter... And James and John, they're, they're there and they're fishermen. They're there to do their job. But are they eavesdropping? Or are they just kind of listening in to the message? And the message grabbed them, just like it grabbed these two teenagers. And they also gave their lives to Christ. Um, you know, God is so good. I, you know, it's just so neat. When we do what Jesus tells us to do, and I'm talking about specifically today, to, to call on people to repent and believe in Christ for salvation. And when they pray and ask God uh, to come into their lives or ask God to reveal himself to them in miraculous ways, he does. You know, this is happening all over the world. I hear story after story of Muslims coming to faith in Christ. They hear about Christ. They have visions about him or they have visions about him. And then someone tells them about Christ and they get saved. I hear about this in, in Hindu populations in the world where they uh, they see physical healings and Jesus reveals himself through miraculous healings and they come and they give their lives to Christ. God is awesome. He's in the still in the miracle business, especially in the miracle of salvation. So I just had to share that with you, kind of a sidebar, some of my own thoughts. Now I'm gonna get back to Dr. Stanley and his message on Luke chapter five, verses one through 11. And he made this powerful statement. He said, one cannot obey God when it is reasonable only. Just drop the mic. Wow. He said, one cannot obey God when it is reasonable only. They were fishermen. They knew fishing. Seven of the 12 
perhaps as many as seven of the 12 of the original disciples of Jesus were fishermen. And I never thought about this before until Stanley pointed it out. They would make good disciples because fishermen, they have some really cool characteristics and qualities about them. They're daring. (laughs) They're willing to get on out there. They're determined. They're patient, or they better be patient. And they just don't give up very easily. And what Jesus said to Peter, it was unreasonable, right? On a, on a surface level, uh, Peter may have thought to himself, what? You know, I've been fishing all my life. You fish at night in the shallow water, not daytime and the deep water. This guy's a preacher. And what does he know about fishing? And he's telling me how to do my job. Now, Peter may have thought that, but that is not what he did. He obeyed Christ. You know, and it may have seemed unreasonable. He may have shaken his head going, this is not going to turn out very well. But anyhow, you, you asked me to do it. I'm, I'm going to do it. And you know the rest of the story. You know, for us, we can rationalize and tell God that we know better than him, or we can humble ourselves and say, yes, Lord, I will do what you tell me uh, to do. Now, when we do that, listen carefully. It always works out for our best. You, you may be thinking, well, why does God do it like that? Why? Because he wants you to trust him. He wants you to have faith. He wants you to recognize, yes, on a human level, superficial level, th- this really does not make sense. But when you obey God and you look at it now from a different perspective, you say, well, this makes perfect sense because God He's just smarter than us. He just knows more than we do. And Stanley put it like this. He said, God has a will for all of us. And there's no such thing as, well, I'm just a mom or whatever. He has a will for us. And he equips us to do what he wants or calls us to do. He will show his will in small and big issues. Do the small things and you will get in the habit of obeying God. So when the big things come, you're ready. He gets involved to help us do it, end of quote. I love that. And you you may be tempted today, you may be thinking, well, I'm just a so-and-so, I'm just a dad of my family, or I'm just a mom, or I'm just a single mom, or, you know, God doesn't have these big plans or that. Yes, he does. You know, God has big plans for all of his children. And here, I can go ahead and tell you what his big plan is. His big plan is to bring great glory to his name and to bless your life. And when you line your life up with the will of God, you'll see those things start to happen. You'll see yourself bringing much glory and honor to the name of Jesus because he is worthy and it's just right. And you'll see blessings flow to your life when you're walking in step with the Spirit of God, when you're obeying Him, when you're humbling yourself before the will of God, the ways of God, again, even though it may be unreasonable on the surface, step on out there and obey Him. You know, God's will for every person is to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and then walk in obedience to Him and then just watch the plan that God has for every person person and watch the plan come to fruition. Watch it come to light. It pleases God and brings him glory when we search out his will. And then we do what he tells us to do. And I want to say this again. This is really important. When you're walking with the Lord and you're doing his will, it will bring him great glory and bring you great blessings and benefits. Stanley commented that Peter thought that, you know, (laughs) he may have thought, Well, we're just going to go for an empty boat ride. He's tired. He had fished all night. The nets were drying. You know, he's going on with his life. He'd done this thousands of times, right? He fished, either caught something or he didn't. This time he did not. He's drying out the nets, didn't want any dry rot. So he's just doing his job. And he might have thought this is going to be a total waste of time. I'm tired. Who is this preacher? What is he telling me? But I'm going to trust in him. He just preached, maybe he did. Maybe he just preached about having faith in God, trusting in God when you don't understand completely what he's doing. Lots of reasons not to obey, but he chose to obey. 
At this point in his message, Dr. Stanley went on to use other biblical illustrations to point out how, on the surface, obeying God does not make sense and it is rather unreasonable to us at first. And and this is why I love listening to Dr. Stanley. He is a Bible teacher. And even most of his illustrations come from Scripture. And he gave a a great one. He talked about Noah. Ooh, talk talk about Noah and the big boat, the big ark. he could have asked God, uh, well, wait a minute, you, you want me to do what? You want me to build a boat that big? Water? Flood? Uh, how much is it going to cost? <laughs> you know? But he didn't. He just obeyed God. He built the boat. And God used that boat to save Noah and all of his family. And it may not have made sense initially, but on this side of faith and obedience, I bet Noah's going, oh, yeah. This makes perfect sense now. Think about Abram in the Ur of the Chaldeans. And he's going, you you want me to do what? You want me to start walking to a place and you're going to show me where you want me to go? Ooh, that does not make sense. But I'm going to do it. And God blessed him. You you want me to take my son's life, Isaac, the son of promise? Ooh, wow. This really doesn't make sense. But God, I'm going to trust you. You could raise him from the dead, God. And I'm going to trust in you. I love these biblical illustrations. Dr. Stanley gives another one. He gives this one. Remember this story. Jesus, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Um, Lazarus dies, and they plead with Jesus. Look, he's sick. Before he dies, please come and help us and heal him. Jesus delays. Lazarus dies. And then Jesus says, let's go. Let's go see them. (laughs) He said, that doesn't make sense. Look, initially, sometimes it it just doesn't make sense. But if you stay with God and you obey God, you're going to shake your head in in wonder and amazement. Yes, Jesus could have healed him, but he let him die. Did the sisters get upset? You bet they got upset. You you didn't come. uh, Jesus, they said, was your friend. And we we even asked you and you delay. Why? You know? But later, it proved to be such a reasonable um, decision. Again, this is post, you know, after faith, after obedience. As I said earlier, Noah's like, yeah, makes perfect sense now. And, and Jesus, he wanted to do something better. And for an example for us all, and humanly speaking, we could say, well, he showed up late. But look, now his timing was perfect. The greater impact more glory to God. You know, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he was there and all these people are looking and many people now about to come to faith in Jesus. Why? Because he says, Lazarus, come on, come forth. Now, the principle is is following God even when it's not reasonable. Common sense is not enough. We have a little bit of sense, but omniscience has all sense, all knowledge. We think Jesus, sometimes he's late, and that's what we think. But God is always on time. Can I say that again? Maybe not so much for you. Can I say this for me? As I'm, as I'm walking through something, and I'm waiting on God. I've been praying to God for three years for something. Lord, show me. Let it be specific. And God just keeps saying, no, not yet. I will show you when it's time. And I trust God. Do you? Do you trust God with your life, with your future, with your finances, with your marriage, with your kids, with your grandkids? Do you trust God or do you not? One of my favorite parts of Stanley's message was when he he shared two examples from his own life, how God's will on the surface did not make sense. But he obeyed the Lord and he found out that God's will made perfect sense. So next time in our next episode, uh, you got to come back and hear, because these are powerful stories from his life. And I, and I believe that these stories are going to impact you and speak to you as they did to my own life when I heard them. I love this whole subject, uh, knowing and doing uh, the will of God. Uh, it takes obedience. It takes faith, as Henry Blackaby would say. It will take, you probably lead you to a crisis, a crisis of faith. And what you do next really determines what you believe to be true about God. And some of you listening uh, today, 
that you may be in that place where you're genuinely seeking the will of God. And man, you've got some big decisions that you are facing in your life and it's real and you're like, Lord, please now show me. And God may be saying, not yet, not yet. Wait on me, trust in me. Uh, I want you to know something. You're not alone. But isn't it cool that God loves you so much that he will tarry with you and he will, he will be patient and he will walk with you and walk with me. I want you to know this. I'm, I will gladly pray for you right now that God would bless you. He would reveal his will to you and that you would have faith and you would trust God. And even though it may seem unreasonable or may not make sense, may not add up right now, just trust God, move forward and obey him. Father, we thank you that you're a good, good father. You love us. You know what is best for us. God, we're so limited and very myopic at times. We, we keep, our vision is limited. But Lord, you have a panoramic view. You have an eternal view. You have no calendars or no clocks. God, it, everything just is with you. So help us, Lord, to trust in you. Help me, God, to trust in you. Big things and little things, trust in you at all times. I pray for these folks who are listening, God. I, I pray they have been blessed by the biblical teaching. Thank you for Dr. Stanley, Lord, and his message. Thank you, Lord, that I was able to share with them from my heart today. I pray for them. I pray for people that don't know you, God, that they would trust in you for the very first time and follow you, Jesus. Repent of their sins and say, I'm all in for Christ and the gospel. And for those that have accepted you, Lord, help them be patient. Help them, God, to walk by faith, knowing, God, that you can be trusted, that our faith, as one person said years ago, our faith reaches into the eternal, but it denies the daily. Lord, help our faith to reach into the eternal and into the daily. And we would trust you, God, in all times and all things. We love you, Lord. We trust you now. We praise you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thanks for listening to Revangelical. We hope today's episode has edified and enhanced your walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week. Like the sound of Revangelical? Our audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.